Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use your vintage Canon FD lenses onto a red DCMC2 body without converting them to Canon FD mount. Sorry, Canon EF mount. Today I wanna to talk about a subject that I've become extremely passionate about the last year, and that's taking old vintage still lenses and adapting them onto modern digital cinema cameras. I first started exploring the Leica R's, which are extremely popular, and they're also on the pricier side, and you have to generally purchase an EF conversion kit to put them onto your camera. So I gravitated towards the Canon FDs, which if you haven't seen the epic breakdown from Media Division, I'll make sure to put that link in the description here and then breaks down why Canon FDs are so popular for modern use. And because of that popularity, the price has really gone up within the last year that I've been looking at them. You can easily pay over 1K for a lens, which is quite expensive for a 40 year old lens, but it's all relative compared to modern AF still glass and cinema glass, which is also very pricey that can run anywhere from two, three, four, five, 10 grand a lens. The second reason I was really drawn to Canon FDs was because I was already shooting on an A1 film camera. So I had purchased a cheap 50 to go with that, but I knew if I started collecting these lenses, I could also use them for film, but also my digital cinema camera. And if you know, in the last year, I purchased a RED, and today is really what I wanna talk about this mount from Simmod that they've made a DCMC2 mount that you can put right on your RED camera body and instantly start using your Canon FDs. And here's some footage that I've shot within the last year on them. current lenses that I own are the 28 2.8, the 35 f2 concave, and the 55 1.2 non-spherical. Let's not get crazy here. If you don't know, Canon FDs are categorized kind of into two different mounts, but they're, they're the same on the back. They'll work with any Canon FD mount, but you have the SEC breech locks, which it's made more of metal and you can actually twist and lock them in place. These are actually the older version of the lenses. And then you have the more modern NFD which are a little bit more on the plastic side, but they also uh, are lighter. So there's pros and cons to both. It really comes down to personal preference. I do like for this red Sibmon mount, the ability to breech lock to lock them into place, which is always just a nice feeling when you're attaching to your camera body. Let's dive a little bit deeper. The biggest issue with the Canon FDs is that they are extremely hard to adapt or mount to either a Canon EF or Sony E-mount, which many people are using these days. There's adapters you can get out there, but they don't always work the best. I have used it on a Blackmagic 4K for Micro Four Thirds, which has worked a decent amount, but this is also where Simmod comes in handy because they offer an EF to FD conversion kit. Simmod is a fantastic website and service. If you haven't checked them out, I've been using their products for about the last year. They make amazing custom lens caps, SIN front rings, and then these conversion kits where if you're trying to convert either a Leica R, um, I think a Pentax or Canon FD. So if you are interested in converting the FDs to EFs on your own, there's plenty of videos out there for you to do that. For me, I chose not to because I wasn't comfortable with it. So I'm gonna share the three reasons why I chose not to convert my Canon FDs to EF mount. I chose not to convert my Canon FD lenses because Sibon makes this fantastic red DCMC2 red mount. As I said, I purchased a Gemini in the last year and this worked extremely well for me and my personal setup. And after doing the math, by the time I bought an EF conversion kit for each individual lens, it probably would have cost at, at least the same or maybe a little bit more to convert each individual lens versus just buying 
the single mount. And that was just outweighing the factors into everything. And then the kicker is also that I'm not the most handy of people and was not comfortable converting my Canon FDs to EF mounts on my own and potentially ruin these lenses that I've worked so hard to find. Well, yes, the Canon FDs are hard to convert, but I actually enjoyed the flexibility of keeping them as is because of this red sim mod mount i could put them on my gemini or even if i choose to go the monstro route and then sipmon also makes a canon rf to fd mount which is actually a little bit cheaper at only 115 dollars being that these lenses are all manual so there's no worry about autofocus that opens up to a whole bunch of other possibilities so if you're shooting on the eos r canon r5 or C70, pretty much any of the new Canon lineup that's gonna be coming out. You can still use these Canon FDs on your RF mount cameras. And then additionally, if you're shooting on the Red Komodo or the Raptor, you can also use your Canon FDs with these. And for me, I'm thinking that the RF mount isn't gonna be going away anytime soon where the EF mount we kind of see are, 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 is phasing out. And so those were a number of factors into my decision. And then the last one was economically, it just made a little bit more sense, say I ever want to get these FD glasses rehoused, which has become an, another huge popular thing and put them into real traditional cinema glass. I know that I wouldn't have sunk the money to convert each individual lens and that I could just send off the lenses as is. So here's a quick little tutorial on how to use the SimMod Red Mount onto your red camera body. All you have to do, take your red tool, switch it out just like any other mount. There was one little tricky thing I had to figure out is uh, there's two dots and you actually have to start on the right hand dot and twist it left. And then if you're using the breech lock, uh, you then lock it back to the left afterwards that comes in the instructions so just make sure you read them the way you can check to see if it works is because for me originally the aperture wasn't changing but if you just rotate your aperture you'll see it open and closing and then that way you know that it's working as you can see i've become pretty invested in the vintage lens market the last year or so canon fd like i said has been my lens of choice but if you have any questions please hit me in the comments below. I'll do my, my best to answer. I've, I've spent time on numerous blogs and different YouTube videos trying to really make this setup the best for what I'm going for. As I mentioned, these modern sensors are so incredibly sharp, which are amazing, but I just really love some of the character and just the different vintage feel that these lenses provide. And also the smooth manual focus shooting on these you don't have kind of the rigid stiffness of a uh, still autofocus lens so all in all i think these these lenses are, are worth checking out um, as i mentioned it's fun to kind of explore around and see what you can find either at local garage sales or your local camera shop to see if you can find any good bargains in there so if you have any questions on where to look what are the best canon fds to buy please hit me in the comments below or send me a message on instagram at daniel j log Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button for me. I've also curated a playlist here for some more gear options. Make sure you subscribe right here. I'm Daniel Mogg. We'll see you next time.